Good morning. I'm Pastor Susan Diamond, and on behalf of Florence Christian Church, a community of faith that welcomes all to God's table of abundant love, grace, and acceptance. We're so glad you're here today. And uh, we pray that this morning you might experience the presence of the living Christ who is among us always. Um, I want to welcome all of you here and online to worship this week. We are um, we are in the season of Advent, and we've been waiting. So you had to wait a little while this morning, but we're so glad that you stuck with us, and we hope that this service of worship will be a blessing in your life. Thank you for being with us. If you are worshiping with us for the first time at Florence Christian Church, uh, please take a moment in the comments section if you're online with us to uh, tell us your name and where you are from. I would love uh, this week to send a special gift from me to you um, if we know that information and uh, we, will, we will look forward to doing that. I also want to invite all of you to take a look at our weekly news on our website, FlorenceChristian.org, uh, to look for opportunities to connect with the, the church through its ministries of service and study and worship. Um, we hope that you will take part in any and all activities that you feel comfortable doing. And now I want to take a moment to invite all of you who are joining with us online or if you are with us today and you have your phone with you and you're watching the service as well, to take a moment to do something that's going to make a huge impact um, for our mission and ministry at Florence Christian Church. And if it is something you would like to do and are able to do, to share this worship service um, with others. Literally what happens is an expansive number of people have the opportunity to see and be with us when you do that. Um, so please take a moment if you feel comfortable in doing that and hit the share button. And finally, let's get ready to worship God. If you are at home and you have a candle, you might want to light it as we have this morning to remind us of the presence of Christ that is always with us. Grab a Bible or your Bible app to follow along with the scripture reading today. Um, get something to drink and to a little piece of cracker or bread to join us later in the service of worship as we celebrate communion together. Um, let's join now in praise and worship of the one who has come so that we might know God's love. <clears throat> Good morning out there, Florence Christian Church. Those that are here to worship with us this morning, we are very thankful that you joined us online. Those that are here today in this season of Advent, this week we're talking about joy, right? Those things that make us joyous. What a better way to celebrate that than we have a baptism today. Yeah! Woohoo! We are so thankful. Serena is here today. Show us, give us this example of an outward showing of faith. She's gone through the process of asking questions and learning. And today is her day and we celebrate as all of heaven joins with us to sing and shout about how amazing this God is. This first song that we're going to lead off is Joyful, Joyful. I know you know it. This one's a little different, so hang with us. Have fun as we celebrate. Here we go. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts and full life bows before you, only to the sun above. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Sun above, melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away.
adore you I had done for like that before Amen. We do celebrate. I hope that you are joyful this morning as you prepare for this service. I love that line that says, teach us how to love each other. That's exactly what Christmas should be about. Amen. I hope that you know that. That's exactly what we celebrate this morning, that God called each one of us to love one another, regardless of where we might be, what has happened in our past, what things are going on currently in our life. Yeah, we 
celebrate this Christmas season together. This next song is not necessarily a Christmas song, but it speaks about so much that Christmas reminds us of. That God would send this wonderful, precious gift to us. That God would become human to understand what it is to be human. To have people around you that fail, that mess up. As we've all experienced that being broken people. And even through that, that then we would be present here this morning to say, God, I know I've messed up. I know I've done things that haven't been glorifying to you. But even so, I am still here to worship you, to say thank you for the blessings of Jesus. This song has so many cool words in it. I hope that you really, really read the lyrics as we sing them. If you don't know that's this song, it's okay to just pay attention to the words, to understand them in the aspect of what this God of creation has done for each one of us. Here we go. The God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, he spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planet. See your heart in everything you made. Every burning star a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise. You don't speak in vain, no syllable empty your voice. For once you have spoken, our nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath Evolving in pursuit of what you said If it all reveals your nature, so will I I can see a heart in everything you say Every single fire of your grace and creation still obeys you so alive if the stars were made to worship so alive if the mountains bow in reverence so alive if the oceans draw your greatness so Everything exists to lift you high, so alive. If the wind goes where you send it, so alive. If the rocks cry out in silence, so alive. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy. Chase down my heart, the 
worship you. In this moment, like so many others, we come to pause from the busyness of our lives, from our fears, from the shadows, and to worship you like all of your creation. So may we feel your presence powerfully now. May it flow through us and in us, filling us with your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love, this day and all the days to come. All this we pray in the name of your Son, whose birth we anxiously await, praying as he taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Each week in Advent, we light a candle to represent one of the gifts from God that we are unwrapping as a community. Do you remember what the first candle was? The first candle was for help people who have faith keep on going. Because of hope, we hope in Christ who does not disappoint us. This The second candle was for peace. As Christians, we long for peace and work for justice, just like Jesus did during his life on earth. Today, we are lighting a candle for God's greatest gift. The greatest gift is the gift of love. God gave us the gift of love in his son, Jesus. Another name for Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. It's important in times like these to remember that God is with us all the time and that God loves us all the time. The love of God is life-changing. God's love partners with hope, peace, and joy and brings us our understanding of these unexpected gifts into focus in the world. Think of a time you felt the love of God 
through the actions of another person as we light the third candle of our Advent wreath. Let's pray together. God of life giving love, you have given us the greatest gift of all, love in human form. Jesus, born in Bethlehem, our Emmanuel, God with us, love align within us, love to counsel and advise us, love to center and calm us, love that never fails. Let us live out your love this Christmas and every day of the year. Amen. Amen. We are now getting ready to hear one of our special stories. Uh, so if there are any children who wish to come and sit on a circle, they are welcome to do so uh, as we get ready to hear this story. And I'll begin by singing our Getting Ready song. Um, and if you're at home, feel free to follow along with me, or you can do the motions as well. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. This is the season of Advent, when we are getting ready to celebrate the mystery of how God became a person. It is a time when we are all on the way to Bethlehem. But who will show us the way? Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet. Isaiah was a prophet who spoke the word of God. He said that the Messiah would be like a light shining in the darkness. And he told the people that they, though they had dwelt in deep darkness, on them a light would shine. And so we light the candle of the prophets to remind us to speak the word of God. Let us enjoy the light. Zechariah and Elizabeth can also show us the way. Zechariah was a priest to whom an angel came and said that his wife Elizabeth would have a special son who would prepare the way for God's special son. But Zechariah did not quite believe the angel because he and Elizabeth were very old. But Elizabeth did have a baby. She had a baby and they named him John. And John was one of God's special sons who would help prepare the way for the most special son. And so we light the candle of Zechariah and Elizabeth to remind us to listen and prepare for the work for God's special son. Let us enjoy the light. The Holy Family can also show us the way. Mary, and Joseph have a secret. They, Mary, will give birth to God's special son. An angel came to them and said, do not be afraid. Be joyful, for you are a favored one. And so Mary and Joseph and their donkey 
are on the way to Bethlehem. And so we light the candle of the Holy Family to remind us not to be afraid, but to be joyful on our way. The shepherds can also show us the way. One night, as they were watching the sheep, an angel appeared to them and said, Do not be afraid. Go to Bethlehem and see. God has good news for you. And then they hurried to Bethlehem to see the good news. And so we light the candle of the shepherd to remind us to listen and look for God's good news. Let us enjoy the light. And now it's time to change our lights. So we change the light of the shepherd the light of the Holy Family, the light of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and the light of Isaiah. And we remember that all these things are present at all times and in all places. Hmm. I wonder what was surprising to you in this story today. Hmm. Let's keep wondering about our story as we continue to worship. Good morning. It's good to be with everyone. This morning's reading is Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 66. A reading from the gospel according to Luke. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped us, his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home, the birth of John the Baptist. And now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. They then began motioning to his father to find out what, he wanted to give, what name he wanted to give him. He asked them for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all the neighbors, and all the things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Will you please join me in prayer? Gracious and everlasting God, we gather this morning in worship as we continue this third week of Advent. We give thanks for our ability to share together this moment. Thank you as you have blessed us with this technology to stay connected. 
but you've also provided us with those who have gifts and talents to make this worship happen each week. As we gather by the light of the lit candles, we give thanks for hope, peace, and joy. We are grateful for this holiday season and all it entails. We do know that this holiday season also brings time of stress, anxiety, and loneliness. We ask for your presence and blessing to be with all those that seek you. We ask for a special blessing to all those affected by the current pandemic. Our days are shorter and they're becoming darker and that darkness seems to last longer each night, Lord. Continually to remind us of your light. Let us be inspired and reminded of the light you bring into the world. Encourage us and challenge us to be that light for others. This week, we focus on joy. Let us give thanks for the joys in our lives. Let us be especially joyful as we celebrate Serena's baptism this morning. Gracious God, we are so happy for her decision, and we know that you rejoice with us. We ask that you bless all of our leaders. We ask that you give them blessings of temperament, wisdom, humility, and compassion. We ask that you bless the church. Let us continue to seek ways as your church to live into our mission and to serve others. We ask that you provide healing to those ill and tired, both of the physical body, but also the mind. Bring comfort and grace to those making difficult decisions. We ask now to offer any prayer requests that we hold in our hearts that we give to you now. Lord God, we know you are with us. Let us be reminded of your presence as we walk together throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Over the past several weeks, we have been revisiting the story of the coming of the Christ child through the lens of the Gospel of Luke in chapter 1. And we've been asking the question each week, why we wait during this Advent season? We've been asking why it was important when uh, there was a period of waiting 2,000 years ago and why it is important for us today as we wait for the coming of Christ once again. So where has Luke taken us this far? We began with the story of Zechariah, the righteous old priest who receives news that is too good to believe, in fact, incredulous to believe, so much so that he is struck speechless by the news. And as he watches and listens over nine months to what God will reveal at just the right time and with boldness and joy, Zechariah opens his mouth to speak the word of prophecy about his son, who will be the promised forerunner of Messiah. And in this, we are reminded that Advent calls us to take time to listen, to listen to what God would reveal to us about what our faith means and what it calls us to for this time in our lives and in our world. Then we spent some time with Elizabeth, wife of Zechariah, cousin of Mary, mother of John the Baptist. We talked about how Elizabeth waited too. In fact, in verse 4, 24 of chapter 1, Elizabeth, we're told, was in seclusion for five months as her pregnancy moved from a dream to an obvious reality. And soon thereafter, we're told that Elizabeth receives a visit from Mary, who has just received word that not only will she bear a son, but that Elizabeth, the one who had been called barren as an old person, was able to bear a son as well. For as the angel Gabriel said, nothing will be impossible with God. We all need an Elizabeth, don't we? We all need the hope that she gives, the encouragement that she gives to us. Um, and we all need to be an Elizabeth when God gives us the ability. Last week, we revisited Mary's story when the angel Gabriel appears and gives her this amazing news that she is favored of God and that she will bear God's son. We're told that Mary ponders this news as she becomes aware of what God is already doing in her life and for the world through her. And in this part of the story, we remember that we are called to take time to ponder 
to consider, to think about what God may be doing in our lives and through faith to place ourselves in that posture of humility and acceptance to let it be, to accept God's call in our lives. Today we are looking at the next part of Mary's story and how we see this remarkable young woman emerge in bold and prophetic proclamation of the wonders of God that are coming into the world through the birth of God's Son. Will you join me in prayer as we prepare our hearts to hear God's message to us today? Living and loving God, we give you thanks for our faith this day, a faith that calls us to ponder, to think about the ways in which you are engaging us as your people and calling us to special callings. We pray today that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you, O oh God, are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. All right, I want to begin now by taking a moment to consider how Mary has been understood by the church. Because there are two very different ways, two very different understandings that the church has had with regard to this biblical character. One is from the Roman Catholic tradition that has understood Mary as a co-redeemer with Christ, a kind of go-between with us sinners here on earth and God in heaven. And there's a long and evolving doctrine within that tradition that has elevated Mary to a kind of supernatural status. Mary, Theotokos, mother of God. And then we have us Protestants who have a much more down-to-earth view of Mary as just a, a humble peasant girl chosen to bring the Son of God into the world, almost ignoring her role in salvation history relegating her to gather dust on the shelf, so to speak. But as New Testament theologian Alice McKenzie has stated, both worship of Mary and reducing Mary only to her biological role miss out on something very important. And that is Mary's example as a person of faith, someone called by God, struggling with the daily demands of her life. It is this Mary who can help us to prepare ourselves spiritually for the coming of her son. So just who is this Mary that the Gospel of Luke presents? Not only here, but Luke's Gospel has Mary showing up repeatedly as the story is told. Mackenzie suggests that we must understand that for Luke, Mary is first a prophet. And we see that in our scripture passage this morning in the Magnificat, this praise, a song of praise of Mary. After she receives the message of the angel and she goes to check it out with Elizabeth and receives her blessing, Mary, we are told, responds with her own song of praise to God. This one who shakes up the status quo who lifts up the humble like her, who chooses her rather than a queen or a princess to be the bearer of the Son of God. Now, why would we see Mary this way? Why would we see her first and foremost, not as a passive and quiet individual, but as outspoken and bold? Mackenzie answers by reminding us of the qualities that we see in Old Testament prophets. There are actually five classic steps to the call of the prophet. First, God's initial call. Second, the special task that God has for that person. The prophet's objection to the call. God's reassurance. And then the prophet's acceptance of the call. In Mary's story, all five of these are present. First comes her call and her commissioning to her task. She is told she is favored by God and will conceive God's son. Now, you may, may remember prophets like Moses and Ezekiel and uh, Jeremiah who are all given the message that they have been chosen by God for a holy task. None of them are given a choice the prophets are simply informed on what they are called to do. And then there's the objection. And listen, there is always 
an objection. Remember that. Jeremiah said, I don't know how to speak. I'm only a boy. Moses said, Lord, I'm not a good public speaker. Send my brother Aaron. Mary says, how can this be? Fortunately, God never pays attention to the prophet's objections. Instead, God assures them that God will be at work through them. Gabriel tells Mary that she has found favor with God, even though there is no doubt she most likely thought it strange and dangerous, a uh, way to be shown favor. <laughs> but she indeed has God's favor, and she is called. The next step is the prophetic, of the prophetic call is God's reassurance. God will be with them. God will give Jeremiah and Moses the messages that they need to share and the ability to do so. And this is important for us to remember. The prophet is not to speak out of his or her own wisdom or eloquence, but rather to be a messenger for God, to do and to speak what God gives them to do and speak. And the promise of God is that God will be with them every step of the way. When Mary hears the word of the angel, nothing will be impossible with God, she receives her affirmation. And when she receives the affirmation, what does she do? We're told that Mary gets up and goes to see Elizabeth, who God has been preparing for six months, not only to get ready for the birth of her own son, but also in order to give a further blessing and word of the Lord to Mary. And once Mary receives that blessing, she responds with praise as she steps fully into her role, not only as the mother of the Christ, but also as a prophet who declares the truth of God. And remember, that is the role of the prophet, to declare the truth of God. With boldness, she declares, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For mighty is the one who has done great things for me. And holy is his name. His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promises he made to our ancestors to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The five stages of the prophet's call. The call, a task, an objection, a reassurance, and acceptance. They may sound familiar to us from the Bible and from its prophets, but don't miss it. They might also ring true for you and for me in our lives of discipleship as we seek to follow the way of Jesus. Yes, we have much to learn from Mary, the prophet, Mary, the mother of Jesus. While her specific task is unique to her life, this call of God extends to us all. So what do we say to that call? We say, as Mary did, here am I. And today, we have the opportunity to witness that call in a very special way. This morning, we are joining a young adult as she publicly says, here I am. And she says that to the call of Christian discipleship and baptism. As disciples of Christ, we practice believer's baptism after, after a person has said yes to Christ's invitation to follow him. At the same time, we also recognize that baptism reflects on what God is already doing in us and for us, that salvation is God's amazing gift of grace. For several months now, Serena Duncan has been on a journey exploring what Christian discipleship means, and she has determined that she is now ready to accept that call to be a follower of the way of Jesus as part of Christ's church. And I can think of no better way to invite all of us to continue our own journeys with God in Christ than to join together 
in this time of celebration through baptism. That with Serena, we will say, here I am. Will you pray with me? Creator Spirit, who is the beginning, in the beginning hovered over the waters, who at Jesus' baptism descended in the form of a dove, who at Pentecost was poured out under the signs of wind and fire, come to us. Open our hearts and minds so that we may hear the life-giving word and be renewed by your power in the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. At this time, as Pastor Diana and Serena enter the baptistry, I want to invite Glenna Galbert, Serena's elder and mentor, to come and to offer a few words of introduction of this wonderful young woman. Come on, Glenn. Thank you, Pastor Susan. And thank you for that wonderful message that during this Advent time, we personally take the time and say, yes, Jesus is my Savior, that we make that confession of faith, just as Serena will be doing here in a moment. And... Um, I tell you, I've known Serena since she was a little tiny thing here in church. And it's been such an honor to be her mentor on this journey of baptism. And we've had a great time together and had a lot of great discussions. But I think my favorite time was when we did our service project at Action Ministries. When we went down and packed the groceries for the seniors in Arcadia and um, we just had such a good time and I saw her joy there as she served others, as she in her caring nature was the hands and feet of Jesus. And I think she'll continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus throughout her life. And um, we just want to say, God bless you, Serena. There you go. Serena. Now's the time for me to ask for your confession of faith. You've been on this journey for a long time, and this is the question. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and is Lord and Savior of the world? Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Well, then it is my... You can take off your mask. And grab your handkerchief. And take, well, you're a little taller, so we'll take up this way. <laughs> Some of, the, some, of the, uh, some of the littler ones I've baptized you. But I am excited and pleased to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Welcome. You are a beloved child of God. Yay! Let's pray together. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome Serena into Christ Church, joined together with all of those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Together, let us encourage one another, building up each other within Christ's body. Together, let us esteem one another in love, praying without ceasing for every good grace to grow into full likeness in Christ. Amen and amen. And I don't know about me because I'm not hearing myself. <laughs> but I am filled with joy. I am filled with joy today because we have experienced our faith in action. And today, the question is out there for all of us. God's call is there for all of us. What will you say? Will you be like Zechariah and listen well? Will you be like Elizabeth and encourage others? Will you be like Mary and ponder these things that God has called you to do? And then when the time comes, say, here am I, servant of the Lord. God is calling all of us this day. My prayer for you is that you will be faithful to that call and say yes. Amen and amen. Let's join together now as we sing a song, Here I Am. I am here to serve and love you. Faith can move the mountain. Let the mountains move. We come with experience. 
expectation waiting here for you when asked who will go, who will give. I have been reminded recently that God calls us again and again and again because God's work in the world continues through you and me. It takes people who give of their time and talent and financial resources. And whether you live here in the tri-state area or you live in Korea, as we learned from a message on our YouTube channel this week, he was listening to one of our pastor's devotions. Um, God's call still comes. It is reaching out into a world that we sometimes do not know. And God's call must be responded to. So today, today I invite you to say, here I am. And like Mary, do something about it. You may respond by writing a song of praise and sharing it. Or you might reach out to someone who needs encouragement. You might share a meal or a financial gift or the gift of prayer. The important thing is that you say yes to whatever God calls you to do. 
If you wish to partner with us this morning by supporting our ministry, you may be, be able to do so by donating online um, or by text or by check, whichever way you feel called and e it easiest for you to do. And as you do, know that you are saying, here I am, faithfully following the call of God today. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gifts that you give to us. And now as you call us to give back, we pray that we might give with a generous heart and be faithful to your call. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. someone is one of the most joyous moments in the life of a minister, of a pastor. It is filled with special, special moments. Uh, but one of the things that makes this even more special is that I am remembering my own baptism. Uh, because unlike many of people, uh, many times people are baptized around Easter or Lent or Pentecost, I was also baptized during the season of Advent at my home congregation where I got to uh, grow up. And so it's a wonderful moment to bring this full circle. And as I'm thinking about that moment and all those people who before and after have played a part in my faith journey, just as all of us have played a part in Serena's faith journey, I am remembered of one, reminded of one of the meanings of when we come to this table. Because when we come to this table, we are joined across time and space with all Christians. And just think about that. Not just the Christians we know, not just our family, not just the people here at this church, not just the other Christians of our denomination. We are joined with all Christians across time and space. And here at this table, we experience that union and we remember our baptism and we remember the gifts of God's love in Jesus Christ when we eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And so as we come to this table today, I want you to remember and mark this moment because it is a special day, one filled with joy every time we come to this table. And we remember how Jesus gathered with his friends and he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we remember how also after supper, Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks, he passed it among them and he said, take, drink, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. And as often as we drink it, we do this in remembrance of him. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for these gifts of the table, for your bread, for the bread and the cup that remind us of your life, of your birth and your teachings and your death and your resurrection, all of those things that bind us together with you and with each other. So today, as we celebrate joyously Serena's baptism, may this time of communion across time and space continue to join us and bind us ever closer to you and to each other as we live out following the example of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. And now you may take your bread. 
um, and eat it. And uh, in a moment, we will hold the cup and drink together. <laughs> The cup of new life found in Jesus Christ. Let us drink and celebrate. Amen. Here we are. The worship is ending, but the service begins. And the service this week is to respond to the call of God on your life. To say, here I am. Here I am. Send me. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Amen.